This episode of Destructoid is brought to you by Carbonite. Coming up on Destructoid, Amnesia, a machine for pigs, has a creepy new trailer. Tara recommends some scary PC titles in honor of Halloween. And scariest of all, Disney buys Lucasfilm. All that and more coming up on a very special Halloween Destructoid show. Welcome to Destructoid. I'm your host, Barbara Slenderman. And joining me today is my son, Travis. Travis. Mom! Why are you being Mom, creepy over I there in the you, dark? Come it's on. It's Slender Man. Okay. You're blowing my rep. Okay, it's embarrassing. Honey. All right, you honey. You always embarrass me. It's fine. It's going to be fine. <clears throat> so, in case you didn't know, today is Halloween. October 31st. Yep, happy Old Halloween. Hallow's Eve. Indeed. Those are some different names the for Halloween. The day of the pumpkins that have fire inside of them. Yes, so we actually have a, quite a bit of news today as well as some editorial pieces. But one quick thing before we move on to the big stuff. Uh, on Monday's show, I reported on a rumor that claimed GTA 5 would be releasing in spring 2013. And it looks like that rumor is no more. Rockstar has officially confirmed that GTA 5 will be available in spring 2013 for both PS3 and Xbox. When asked about PC, they released a follow-up statement saying, quote, We are currently focused on the Xbox 360 and PS3 versions of the game and don't have any details to share about a PC version at this time. Pre-orders are going to open up on November 5th, and you can expect to get many more details about the game a few days later on November 8th, when that digital Game Informer spread gets released. In the meantime, please enjoy this picture of a blonde lady in a string bikini taking a self-portrait on her iPhone. I, Justine, confirm for GTA 5. Mm-hmm. It, it totally does look like her. It is an accurate representation of California, I must yeah, say. Yeah, so if you missed it yesterday, probably the biggest piece of geek culture news... Oh. Sorry, got something Mom! on my face. Oh, stop sorry, it! Sorry, Knock I didn't it want off. You to look stupid. So anyway, uh, probably the biggest piece of geek news uh, this year, if not this decade, dropped yesterday. Disney has bought Lucasfilm for a whopping 4.05 billion dollars. I don't know how to pronounce that that decimal in in that context, but uh, yeah, with the acquisition, Disney now owns LucasArts, Skywalker Sound, Industrial Light and Magic, and of course, uh, Lucasfilm and its properties like Star Wars and Indiana Jones. Uh, Disney uh, doesn't want to upset the apple cart, so they're pretty much keeping people where they are. Uh, on the video game uh, side of things, we know that LucasArts has been laying pretty low. They shut off Star Wars 1313 at E3 this year, and we still don't know much about it, but it is not supposed to be affected by the acquisition. However, moving forward, LucasArts is going to be focusing more on mobile and social games, which is uh, initially kind of groan-worthy, and immediately brings to mind stuff like Star Wars Angry Birds and, uh, I don't know, Star Wars version of Farmville. I don't want something like that. That mm -hmm. sounds awful. Uh, but, you know, what it also could mean is like Android or iOS versions of some old LucasArts classics like Day of the Tentacle, uh, Full Throttle, Grim, Grim Fandango, or one of my all-time favorites, Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis, which I would love to play on an iPhone or iPad. Um, yeah, Star Wars games, on the other hand, are going to be licensed out to third-party developers, which could be amazing or could be really terrible. Maybe they will throw a pile of money at Bethesda to turn Prey 2 into a Boba Fett game, and it would be the best thing ever. It probably won't happen, but I can dream. I know a lot of people probably freaked out over Disney now owning Star Wars, but remember that Disney also bought Marvel back in 2009, and then this last summer we got The Avengers, which you gotta admit was pretty fun, and then next summer we're getting an M-rated Deadpool game, so I don't think Disney's involvement is really messing up anything. And of course they also own Pixar, who can do no evil, aside from Cars 1 and 2. I heard those were good. They were actually evil. They were mm -hmm. Chevron commercials. Oh. Uh, the crazy part, Star Wars Episode 7 is being fast-tracked for a 2015 release with Lucas on board as a creative consultant, whatever that means, though presumably not writing or directing. Uh, guys, I'm, I'm really excited about this. I'm actually looking forward to this. I don't know how many of you guys were around before the prequels actually came out and we realized that they were a bad thing, but the best part about them was getting really excited when we had no idea what they were going to be, uh, be about. Back in like 1998, we thought that Jet Li was going to be playing Boba Fett in Episode 2, and the only Western movie he'd appeared in at that point was Lethal Weapon 4, so we were all like, oh yeah, that guy's going to be playing Boba Fett. And we were wrong. They got that guy from uh, nothing. They got that little kid to play Boba Fett. Shit was crazy. Anyway, episode seven, bring it on. Great story, honey. 
Th thanks, Sit up Mom. straight. <clears throat> so the Wii U is less than three weeks away, and Nintendo just detailed a special promotion that they're giving to anyone who purchases the deluxe version of the console. Now, in case you've forgotten, the deluxe version is black. It has four times as much storage as the, as the regular version, 32 gigs versus 8 gigs. And it comes with some stands and a copy of Nintendo Land, the ultimate Nintendo adventure. That's a, that's a marketing term right yep. there. If you don't think that's worth the extra 50 bucks, then perhaps the deluxe digital promotion will change your mind. Starting with the system's launch and running until December 31st, 2014, any deluxe Wii U owners who purchase a digital game, either through the eShop or from a retail store download code, will receive 10% of their purchase back in the form of points. Meaning if you buy a game for $9.99, you get 99 points from it. Users can then redeem those points in increments of $500 for, in exchange for a $5 eShop credit. So it's kind of a neat program all in all, especially for those of us who don't really care to own physical copies of games. But is it enough to make you spend 50 extra bucks on the deluxe console? Is it? No. My guess is no. I don't think so. Do you Although, like my Halloween Wii U logo I did? It's a ghost saying Wii U. Oh. That's the best I could do. Computers. Computers, everybody. Yeah. So, uh, yes, it's Halloween. Everybody get spooky. Are you spooky? Ah! Well, damn it, here's some spooky trailers that came out today because it's Halloween. For starters, we got a new trailer for Amnesia, a machine for pigs. Uh, this is a proper trailer, uh, at least longer compared to the teaser we got back in June, though they're both a little bit vague. Uh, if you've been confused by what this pig machine is going to be in the title, the trailer explains with the text, the world is a machine, a machine for pigs, fit only for the slaughtering of pigs. So this is like Saw, basically? I'm pretty sure it's based on Smashing Pumpkins lyrics, but that mm. might just be me. Uh, well, in addition to being terrified, I'm now actually depressed from, from that. The world is nothing more than a pig killing machine, and apparently we're all pigs. Bacon, everybody! Uh, but honestly, the trailer, uh, I don't think it's even that scary. I mean, I, I admittedly, you know, I didn't have the sound on, and uh, while it was playing, I opened up Twitter in a different tab, but I, didn't, I don't think it was that big of a deal. I don't think people are really gonna get scared by it that much. But you probably should watch it, because it's actually really creepy. Um, Amnesia, A Machine for Pigs, is uh, scheduled for release sometime around January for PC, Mac, and Linux. Uh, next, are you still feeling spooky? Well, good, because here's a trailer for Until Dawn, which is that PlayStation Move game where you're basically controlling a crappy horror movie, but it's supposed to be a lot of fun, and you have to use the PlayStation Move controller. Uh, the last one we saw sort of made it look like a campy sex romp slasher flick with all the teenagers getting drunk and feeling each other up in a cabin, and then suddenly murder started happening. But this trailer seems to be going after the Saw audience. Mm -hmm. um, like, completely shamelessly. Oh, wow, there's, there's a actually saw. a saw. Yeah, and then at the end it's just like, if you want your friend to live, follow my instructions carefully. I'm so bad at following instructions, though. Wow. That That's, does not bode well for me. That sure is a solid game premise there. I'm actually really interested in this game. It's supposed to be um, weird and kind of, like, kind of campy, but at the same time, like, it kind of knows it's bad, I think. Sure. Like, Dale North wrote up a preview about it a while ago, and he was, he was just like, this could be a good game for, you know, a bunch of friends to play together and have drinks at the same time. Uh, but do I want to buy a PlayStation Move controller? That's the real question. Oh. Uh, finally, we have a trailer for Castlevania. If you're feeling moderately spooky, this is Castlevania Mirror of Fate, not the uh, Lords of Shadow or whatever the hell it's called. This is the 3DS one, and of course the trailer shows off uh, some cool looking, well, Castlevania gameplay, in, but it's in that dumb sort of, here's a picture of a 3DS that we put video on top of, which is always awkward. Uh, the new trailer promises us uh, thrilling features such as intense whip combat, extreme platforming, and completely breaking any kind of, uh, you know, sentence structure they had. Also, explore Dracula's castle. Why do these all sound like sex moves? Uh, the, yeah, explore Dracula's castle. That's a good one. I like that one. Extreme <laughs> platforming. Intense whip combat. Oh, man. So I don't know who wrote that, but good work, I guess. That's hitting 3DS sometime next year, so there. Spooky oh, games. Spooky games. We actually have more spooky games to talk about, but first, a word from our sponsor. Guys, I know we joke around a lot, but hard drive crashes are no laughing matter. Unless it happens to someone else, then it's usually pretty funny. Fortunately, Carbonite can protect your files from a crash, fire, theft, or accidental, accidental toilet drowning by automatically and continually backing up your files so you never have to remember to back up again. Whether you have one or 21 computers at your home or small business, Carbonite is simply the better backup plan. Over 1 million customers trust them to protect their files, with plans starting at only $59 a year. 
Better yet, start your free trial at Carbonite.com with the offer code Destructoid and you will get two bonus months if you decide to buy. Again, that link is Carbonite.com and the offer code Destructoid will get you two free months with your purchase. Back to the show. So since it is the spookiest day of the year, we Ooh. thought it might be appropriate to recommend some horror games that we both really enjoy. And then we remembered that Max is terrified of horror games, and you guys are probably balls deep in Assassin's Creed, Dishonored, and Borderlands 2 right now, or a combination of the three. So we rethought that decision, and instead we're gonna run down a few of the shorter horror games that can be completed in just one evening. One spooky evening. Starting with our own horror game, Slender, or Slender the Eight Pages, as it's called now. This is, of course, based on the Slenderman mythos, obviously, and the entire game is basically you running around in a forest looking for pages of a manuscript with only a flashlight to guide you. This has been getting overwhelmingly positive reviews since it came out. Even cynical old Jim Sterling called it one of the scariest experiences he's ever had. And while I wouldn't go that far personally, I will say they really nailed the atmosphere in this game. It actually reminds me a lot of Amnesia, The Dark Descent, in the sense that the fear of what's out there is actually scarier than what's really out there. You know, fear is the mind killer and whatnot. Um, and of course, good sound effects help as well. That's out on PC and Mac. It's free. You can download it at parsecproductions.net slash slender. And they're actually expanding this into a full PC game that's going to be called Slender the Arrival, and that'll have some extra content in there as well. It'll have so. a whole 12 pages to yes. collect. Yes. Um, no, there's supposedly new levels and stuff. Next up, we've got Home, which I hesitate to even call a video game because it's more of an interactive storytelling experience. You play as a character who wakes up in bed and has no idea what happened to him or where he is, and you have to explore the things around you in order to find clues. Um, so there's kind of a choose-your-own-adventure choose your vibe here because it'll occasionally present you with a couple options on what to do, like pick up this knife, leave this knife on the ground. Um, and it's not really clear how those options actually change the outcome of the game. But either way, it's very interesting and unique. It's only an hour long, so you can finish it, like, probably before this episode is over. I think that's how long our episodes are. And it's on sale right now for $1.49 on Steam. It's Windows only. That sale ends tomorrow at 10 a.m. Pacific time. So, yeah. Get on that. Also featured in this week's Steam sale is Lone Survivor, which is a psychological adventure game where you play as a survivor in a city full of disease and zombies. Now, unlike Home, the choices you make here actually have a very noticeable impact on the outcome of the game, and I don't want to spoil it for you, but things take some very interesting turns along the way. This is 50% off on Steam right now, so it's five bucks, it's Windows and Mac, and you could probably beat this game in around three to six hours, I'm that's actually, guess. That's a great game. I, yeah. I played that when I was down with my, my wisdom teeth out, so I was all whacked out on Vicodin. That's it probably was, the perfect way to play it. It was a strange experience. It um, is. Speaking of, of horror games, uh, one game that you just you just dug this up earlier, uh, but it's uh, The Darkness 2 is actually now on Amazon for today. I don't know how long it's going on for, but uh, a PC download from Amazon is five bucks for The Darkness 2, which is, uh, if you're unfamiliar with bucks, that's very few bucks, and it's therefore bucks. is cheap. Um, we actually both really like this game. I love this and it's, game. It's a good, gruesome horror. A lot of people will tell you it is actually too short of a game, but I thought it was, you know, it's a good yeah, solid Yeah, I don't know like, if it technically qualifies as a horror game, but... It's gross. And it's there's really like a monster gross in you. and He's, creepy, and there's hell in it, You so. can rip car doors off and throw them at guys, and yeah. they like, get chopped in half. It's and it's, awesome. And it's also a pretty short game. And it's around find, six hours, so... If you so. find the mafia to be spooky, they're in that, too. Yes, so, you know. they are. There are some gangsters yeah. in there. Jump on that um, But yeah, you could totally beat that in a night if you well-determined, I guess. <clears throat> and that concludes the news portion of today's program. On to the shameless Twitter plugs. Oh, yes. If you guys want to keep up with us outside of the show, you are more than welcome to. You can find me at Tara Longest on Twitter. He is Max Scobill, and the Destructoid Show is just Detoid Show. Have a safe Halloween, everyone. Eat lots of candy. Don't stay out too late. And if you're looking for a fun Halloween trick, try giving out pennies instead of candy this year. I guarantee you those kids will never bother you on Halloween again. If you're looking for an even more fun Halloween trick, throw eggs at her house because so, she gives out friggin' no. pennies. We'll see you guys you later. You live with me.